In this video, we're going to explore how to remove documents from our MongoDB collections using Mongoose. Then, you're going to be responsible for filling out the delete route, which will let someone delete a to-do by the ID. To get started, we're going to duplicate that Mongoose queries file, calling the new file mongoose-remove. In here, we can remove everything below our initial imports. I'm going to highlight everything in the file, including the uncommented out code below, remove it, and we end up with a file that looks like this. Mongoose gives us three methods for deleting our records. The first one lets you delete multiple records. This one is todo.remove. And todo.remove works kind of like todo.find. You pass in a query, and that query matches multiple records, removing all of them. If it matches none, none will get removed. Now, the difference between to do find and to do remove, other than the fact that remove removes the docs, is that you can't pass in an empty argument and expect all the documents to get removed. If you want to remove everything from your collection, you need to run it like this. If we run this, we're going to have everything get removed. I'm going to tack then on right here. We're going to get back our result, and we can print that result to the screen using console.log result just like this. Now we can run the mongoose remove file, which is going to remove all of the to do's from our database. Node playground forward slash mongoose hyphen remove dot JS. Now, when we run the remove method, once again, we get back a results object. A lot of this stuff is not useful to us, but up at the very top, there is a result property. We can see that the removal did work. We got a one back as opposed to a zero, and we have the number of records that were removed. In this case, the number of records happens to be three. Now, there are two other ways to remove documents, and these are going to be much more useful for us in this video. The first one is going to be to do dot find one and remove. Now, find one and remove is going to work kind of like find one. It's going to match that very first document, only it's going to remove it. Now, this will also return the document so you can do something with the removed data. Now, the data will be removed from the database, but you will get the object back so you can print it to the screen or send it back to the user. This is unlike the remove method. In the remove method, we do not get the docs back that got removed. We just get a number saying how many were removed. With find one and remove, we do get that information back. Now, another method is to do dot find by ID and remove. Find by ID and remove works just like find by ID. You pass in the ID as the argument and it removes it. Now, both of these are going to return the doc and that is exactly what we want. There's no need to run both of them. We can just run one to do dot find by ID and remove. This is going to let us remove a to do by ID, some ID like this, and we're going to be able to attach a then method providing our callback. And the callback is going to get the doc back. You could call it doc, or in this case, we can call it to do since it is a to do item. Now that we have this in place, we just need to create a to do since we deleted all of them and put the ID in right here. Over inside of RoboMongo, I can right click that to do's collection and insert a document. We're just going to set a text property and I'll set that text property equal to something to do. And we can save that record. I'm going to make sure that when I click view documents, we do get our one document and it's sitting right here. Now, obviously it is missing some of the properties since I created it in RoboMongo, but that is fine for our purposes. I'm now going to edit that document and grab the ID. And this is the ID we can add into our playground file to make sure the document gets removed. Over inside of Adam, right here, we'll pass in our string. This is the string ID. And inside of our then callback, we're going to use console.log to print the to do to the console. I am going to comment out this call to remove up above because otherwise it would remove the document we're trying to remove right here. With this in place, I can now save the file, head into the terminal, and rerun the script. I'm going to shut it down start it up again. And what do we get? We get our document sitting right here, which is fantastic. And if I head into RoboMongo and try to fetch the documents into dos, we're going to get an error that there are no documents. We had one, but we deleted it. Now inside of Atom, we can also play around with find one and remove. Find one and remove works exactly the same as find by ID and remove, only it takes that query object. This would be to do dot find one 
and remove, we would pass in the query object like this, pasting in our ID, and we could attach our then callback, which would get called with the document just like this. Both of these work very similarly. The big difference is whether or not you need to query by more than just the ID. Now that you know how to use find by ID and remove, we're going to go into the server file and start filling out the actual route. This is going to be the route that lets us delete a to-do. I'll do the setup for the route for you, but you're going to be responsible for filling out everything inside of the callback function. To create a delete route, we're going to use app.delete. Then we're going to provide the URL, which will look identical to the one we have for getting an individual to do by ID forward slash to do's forward slash colon ID. This will be the ID we can access inside of the callback function. The callback function will get the same request and response arguments. And inside of here, I'll leave some comments to guide you in the right direction, but you're going to be responsible for filling every single thing out. First up, get the ID. Right here, you're going to pull off the ID just like we do up above. And we're going to do that because the next thing you're going to do is validate the ID. If it's not valid, not valid, return a 404. If it's not valid, you're going to send a 404 back just like we do above. Next up, you're going to remove to do by ID. And this is going to require you to use that function we just discussed over inside of the mongoose remove file. You're going to remove it by ID and there's two ways that could go. We could have a success or we could have an error. If we do get an error, you can respond in the usual way, sending back a 400 with an empty body. Now, if it's a success, we're going to need to make sure that a to-do was actually deleted by checking that the doc came back. If no doc, send 404. So the person knows that the ID could not be found and it could not be removed. If doc, send doc back with a 200. Now, the reason we need to check if the doc exists is because this function find by ID and remove is still going to have its success case called even if no to do gets deleted. I can prove this by rerunning the file after having deleted the item with that ID. I'm going to comment out find one and remove, head into the terminal, rerun the script, and what do we get? We get null as the value of to do. That means you want to set up an if statement like we do here to do something specific if no item was actually deleted. With this in place, you are ready to go. You know how to do all of this. Most of it is done in the route up above and everything specific to removing an item was done over in this playground file. Take a moment to pause the video, knock this out. Once you have it filled out, you're going to go into Postman. You're going to create a couple new items because currently we have none. Then you can try to make a delete request, seeing exactly what happens when you provide a valid ID or you provide an invalid ID. Make sure everything works as expected. When you're done, go ahead and click play. Hopefully you were able to get that done and you were able to successfully delete the to-do you created inside of Postman. If so, that is fantastic. Now we're going to go through one by one. The first thing we need to do is grab the ID off of the request object. I'm going to make a variable called ID, setting it equal to request.params. This is where all of our URL parameters are stored. Then we get it by value. We have ID set up right here, so we would get the ID property. I'm going to remove the comment and down below we can validate the ID. If object ID dot is valid. Now we're checking if this ID is valid and if it is valid, well, we don't really want to do anything. All we care about is if it's not valid. So I'm going to flip the Boolean value and inside of here, we can now run some code when the ID is not valid. That code is going to send back a 404. I'm going to use return to prevent the rest of the function from being executed. Then we're going to go ahead and respond, setting the status response.status equal to a 404 and we'll call send to initiate the response with no body data. Now that the object ID is valid, we can move on down below actually removing it. Right here, we're going to kick things off by calling to do dot find by ID and remove. 
Now, find by ID and remove, as you know, takes just one argument, the actual ID to remove. We can call then, passing in our success callback, which, as we know, will get called with the individual to do document. Now, inside of the success case, we still have to make sure a to do was actually deleted. If there was no to do, we're going to send a 404 back. If there was no to do, we are going to respond using return and setting the status using response.status to a 404 and calling send to initiate the response. Now, if this if statement doesn't run, it means a to do was actually deleted. In that case, we want to respond with a 200, letting the user know that everything went well. And we're going to send the to do argument back response.send, passing in to do. The only thing left to do for this to do challenge is to call catch. We're going to call catch so we can do something with any potential errors. All we're going to do is respond using response.status, setting it equal to a 400, and we'll go ahead and call send with no arguments, sending back an empty response. With this in place, we are now good to go. We have everything set up just like we wanted to, which means we can remove the comments from down below. And you'll notice that the method we have down below looks really similar to the one we have up above. And this is gonna be the case for a lot of our routes that manage an individual to do item. We're always gonna to wanna to get that ID. We're always gonna to wanna to validate that the object ID is indeed a real object ID. And down below inside of our success and error cases, similar things are also gonna happen. We wanna make sure that a doc was actually deleted. If it wasn't, we'll send back that 404. And with this in place, we can now verify that this route works. Now we can save the file and start up the server in the terminal. I'll use clear to clear the terminal output, and then we can run node server forward slash server JS. Once the server is up, we can move into Postman and start firing off a couple of requests. First up, I'm going to create a few to do's. I'll send this off and then I'll change the text and send it off again. I'll change the body text to some other to do item sending that off and now we should have two to do's if i go to get to do's and fetch them what do we get we get our two to do's now i am going to need one of these ids this is going to be the to do that we delete so what i will do is copy this to the clipboard then we can go ahead and create our new route this new route is going to use the delete method so we're going to switch from get to delete then we can go ahead and provide the url using the environment variable url that we created in the last video the route is forward slash to do's forward slash ID. I'm going to paste the ID in here. Now I can go ahead and run the request. When I run it, what do we get? We get a 200. Everything went well. And down here we have the document that we deleted. If I go back to get to do's and rerun it, now we only have one document. The item that we passed in as the ID to delete did indeed get deleted. I'm going to save this request to our collection so we can fire it off without having to manually enter all of that information. Let's save as delete in uppercase, followed by the route forward slash to do's forward slash colon ID. We are going to save this to an existing collection, the to do app collection. Now we have this route sitting right here. We can always go ahead and access it whenever we need. Now from here, we're going to go ahead and fire the request again. This is going to try to delete a to do whose ID is valid, but doesn't match one in the collection. And we get a 404 back. Now, if I make this ID invalid by deleting a bunch of characters and I send that off, we also get a 404 because the ID is invalid, which is fantastic. With this in place, we can now make a commit over inside of the terminal. I'm going to shut the server down run git status, and you can see we have two files. We have a new file, the mongoose playground file, and we have our modified server file. I'm gonna use git add dot to add all of those to the next commit, and we'll use git commit with the M flag to make the commit. Add, delete, to do's by ID route. I'm gonna make the commit and push it up to GitHub. We can also go ahead and deploy our application using git push Heroku master. Now we'll be able to delete our to do's inside of the Heroku application. With this in place, we are now done. I will see you next time where we're going to write some test cases for the route we just set up. Stay tuned. I will see you then.